collimation is the process of aligning your telescope's optical components so that their optical axes coincide. In the case of a Newtonian telescope, this means aligning the diagonal, the focuser, and the primary mirror. If these components are set properly initially, then only a slight fine-tuning is needed at the start of each observing session. The nice thing about collimation is that most of the effort can take place in the comfort of your living room. Right now, you may feel intimidated by the idea of collimating your telescope, but by the end of this video, you should feel like a collimation master. We're going to use a simple model to review the relationships that exist between these components and why their correct alignment is so important. The primary mirror of a Newtonian telescope has an optical axis which extends out from the center of the mirror. Starlight entering the tube, traveling parallel to the optical axis, focuses at the image plane and on the optical axis. The telescope forms its sharpest image here. We call this the telescope's sweet spot. Starlight entering the tube at an angle to the optical axis focuses at the image plane, but slightly to one side of the optical axis. The farther off axis these images are, the more distorted they become. This distortion is the result of off axis aberrations. The diagonal mirror reflects the light from the primary mirror into the focuser, which we can conveniently do here in this mock-up. Who says you can't bend light? Because of the important role of the diagonal in collimation, it will play a major part in this video. Your eyepiece is used to magnify the images formed at the image plane by the primary mirror. Your eyepiece is used to magnify the star images formed at the image plane. This computer-generated spot diagram shows what stars should look like through a collimated telescope. The large circle represents a low-power, wide-field eyepiece. The best images are on axis at the center of the field. The smaller circle represents a higher power eyepiece, which has a smaller field of view. When your telescope is out of collimation, the sweet spot, where the images are the best, no longer falls at the center of your eyepiece. In a low power eyepiece, a telltale sign that a telescope is out of collimation is that the sharpest star images fall away from the center of the field of view, as you see here. In a higher power eyepiece, a severely miscollimated telescope may not even have the sweet spot visible in the high powered eyepiece's field of view. Correct alignment brings the sweet spot back to the center of the eyepiece's field. Zeroing in on the sweet spot is what collimation is all about. We created these artificial star images by shining two floodlights on a spherical Christmas tree ornament hung about 100 feet from the telescope. This video image was captured through a 10-inch F5 telescope at 300 power. If your telescope was way out of collimation, your star images might look like this. A properly collimated telescope with good optics under good seeing conditions should produce star images that are points of light surrounded by an airy disk. If you're going to be successful at collimating your telescope, you'll need to become familiar with the objects, the reflections, and multiple reflections that you'll see when you look down the focuser tube. Tape a piece of white paper 
on the inside of the tube opposite the focuser. And then place your eye about six inches from the top of the focuser tube and with nothing in the focuser, here's what you should see. First, identify the inside of the far end of the focuser tube. This will be an important reference surface during collimation. Next, identify the outermost edge of the front surface of the diagonal. This is also known as the clear aperture. Now move your eye as close as possible to the diagonal and imagine the diagonal as a mirror that you are using to look at the bottom of your tube. You should see the primary mirror surface, the primary mirror clips if you have any, and a dark area around the primary which is the end of your tube. This is the primary mirror's surface and this is the dark area which is really the end of your tube. When your telescope is completely collimated, this dark annulus will extend evenly around the reflection in the secondary. If the collimation is roughly correct, try to identify the reflection of the secondary in the primary also if your mirror has been spotted already, try to identify this spot. While these reflections are not as important as the others, it is helpful to become familiar with them. Take some time to figure out how these images are formed, and you'll be well on your way to understanding the collimation process. What's going on a lot easier. Axial adjustment is the position towards or away from the primary mirror. In this example, it is done by adjusting these two nuts. Rotation of the diagonal holder is simply rolling the holder about the shaft. This is the motion we describe as tilt. There we go. Once you've accomplished the course alignment, your next goal is to fine tune the axial location of the secondary. That looks good. Your next goal is to fine tune the rotational adjustment of the secondary. The next step is the diagonal rotational adjustment. You rotate the diagonal until the end of the tube appears to be centered in the diagonal. The next step is the diagonal tilt adjustment. Here we use the three tilt adjustment screws to center the image of the primary mirror in the axis perpendicular to the rotation adjustment. 